Today we are going to be solving multi-step equations. So we're going to be using some of the concepts we used yesterday in simplifying some expressions, and then also the prior day where we solved some two-step equations. And the whole idea is to make a two-step equation. So we want to combine some like terms. And so looking at this equation, we've got 12n minus 7 minus 3n. And so it all equals 11. Well, what I like to do is draw a line down the equal sign, and that helps remember to do the same operation on both sides of the equal sign to keep this in balance. So the first thing I want to do is collect some like terms. Now, I've got this 12n and this negative 3n. So always look at the sign in front of the term, and that'll help you figure out what to do. If the signs are opposite, we're going to subtract. So we have 9n and then minus 7 equals 11. Now it becomes a problem like we solved before where we've got a two-step equation. We're just going to do an opposite operation here. So this is a minus 7, so we're going to end up adding 7 to both sides. And so what that gives us is we still have this 9n, and this all equals 18. And so from there all I have to do is divide by 9, and then I'll have my answer. And so I end up with an answer of 2. But let's check to make sure it makes sense. Let's take that 2 and substitute it back in. And so we go ahead and do that. We've got 2 times by 12, so the parentheses mean to multiply, minus 7, minus 3 times by 2 equals 11. So we do some work there. 24 minus 7 minus 6. Negative 3 times 2 makes the 6. And so when I subtract 7, I end up with 17 minus 6. And that does give me 11. So when the two numbers agree, we know we've got the right answer. And taking a look at our next one here, 3a plus 2 plus 4a equals 23. And so with this one, same sort of thing. We're going to try to simplify that expression on the left-hand side. To do that, I'm going to combine the 3a and the 4a. So I combine those as one. And so when I do that, that gives me 7a. So 3a's and 4a's make 7a's. I bring down that plus 2, and it all equals 23. So from this point, now I'm going to do those opposite operations. So again, sometimes it's nice to draw that line down the equal sign. It helps you remember to do the same thing on both sides. It also keeps this equation lined up, numbers lined up. And it's better if you do that, if you line up the terms when you're doing the work. So I'm going to bring the 7a down. And this all equals now 21. So when I divide by that 7 on both sides, I end up with a equaling 3. Let's take that 3 and substitute it back in to make sure we're getting the right answer. 3 times 3 plus 2, then plus 4 times 3 equals 23. And so when I do that work, I've got 9 plus 2, and then 4 and 3 make 12 equals 23. So when I add that, I get 11 plus 12, and sure enough, 11 and 12 do give me 23. So I know I've done the problem right now. That's the nice thing about doing these problems, is that you know you have the right answer if you check your work. Here I'm using the distributive property. I'm going to distribute the 4 over that expression. So now I've got 4y plus 20 plus 3 equals 35. And so now I'm going to go ahead and collect some like terms. So you notice I'm still on the same side of the equal sign. I'm just kind of reducing this so it just makes it into a two-step equation. So now I'm going to combine that 20 and the 3 to make 23. So now, after those last two steps, I've made it into a two-step equation. So I'm going to go ahead and solve by doing some opposite operations. So notice I'm taking 23 away from the left-hand side. In order to keep this equation in balance, I have to do the same to the right-hand side. So now I have 4y equals, and this gives me 12. So just one more step, and divide by 4 on both sides, and that gives me y is equal to 3. Well, to check my work, I'm just going to take that 3 and substitute it back in. 4 multiplied by 3 plus 5 and then add the 3 equals 35. So do the work inside the parentheses. 4 times by 8, or 4 times by, yes, 8, plus 3 equals 35. That makes 32 plus 3, and that does equal 35. 32 and 3 make 35. 
So when the two numbers agree, you know you've done the problem correctly. Same sort of thing on this next problem, same type of problem. So we're going to go ahead and use that distributive property, 2h minus 12 plus 20 equals negative 4. So this problem is a little bit trickier because we're going to end up having some opposite signs here. When we have opposite signs, we have to subtract. And so I bring down that 2h, and now equal, uh, well, plus, plus 8. And the reason why it's positive 8 is because I have more positives than negatives. It's all equals negative 4. So I've got to be real careful in this next step when I do this opposite operation. So that's a plus 8. So I need to take 8 away. Now notice they're the same sign, so I'm going to end up adding those two numbers together. So now I have 2h equals negative 12. The two signs mean that I add, and since they're both negative, that makes a negative. I go further in the negative direction. I divide by 2, and I've got h equaling negative 6. Let's check and make sure it's right. 2 times by negative 6 take away 6 plus 20 should equal negative 4. Let's see if it works. So I go ahead and do some work there. This is 2, and then they're the same sign. So I end up adding. So you add the opposite. They're the same sign. And then plus 20 equals negative 4. So this makes negative 24 plus 20. And sure enough, those two numbers do equal negative 4. So it does check out. So we know we have the right answer there. Looking at our next one. A little bit tougher because we've got a negative 3x, positive 3x. See, they're opposite signs, so we're subtracting those two numbers. Gives us a negative 29, or 28, 28x, and then minus 18 equals 38. And so from this point, I'm going to do some opposite operations. I'm going to end up adding this 18 to both sides. And so when I do that, I end up bringing down my negative 28x, and then this all equals, and I end up with a 56. And then from that point, I just have one division problem. So I'm going to divide by negative 28, and notice that I'm dividing by a negative this time. I have one negative, one positive, so the answer is going to end up being a negative. So let's see how many times 28 goes in there. Well, if I double 28, 28 times by 2, let's see what that gives me. I multiply this, and I end up with 16, carry a 1, that makes 56, so that's it. So negative 2 is our answer, so I checked the work right here. So let's go ahead and substitute that two back, negative 2 back in there. Negative 31 times by negative 2, minus 18, plus 3 times negative 2 equals 38. So I do that work here. I've got to multiply these two numbers. It makes positive 62 minus 18, and then minus 6 equals 38. So subtracting these two numbers, so off to the side, 62 minus 18. I'm going to borrow a little bit, so it makes 44. So 44 minus 6. And sure enough, when I subtract those two numbers, I do get 38. So 38 does equal 38, so I've checked it out. I know I have the right answer. So over here, Distributing the 1 and a half, and so 1.5b plus, now off to the side, 6 times by 1 and 5 tenths. So when we do that, that gives me 30, so I carry the 3, and that makes 9. Move the decimal over, so it's 9. 9.0 is 9, so plus the 9 equals 24. So I end up adding those two 9s together. So they're the same type of terms, so those are called like terms. So I have this 1 and 5 tenths b plus 18 equals 24. So now I'm subtracting that 18 from both sides, and that gives me 6. So now I've got the 1 and 5 tenths b equals 6. And so now I've got the division problem dividing by that 1 and 5 tenths. So let's go ahead and set up our division problem. 1 and 5 tenths into 6. We'll move that decimal over one space, add a 0. And 15 goes into 60 four times. So 4 times 5 makes 20. And carry a 2 makes 60. So 60 is what it is. So B is 4. So we check your work real quick. You can substitute the 4 back into B. And you'd have 1 and 5 tenths. And then 4 plus 6. And then plus the 9 should equal 24. Well, when we add the 4 and the 6, we get 10. And the nice thing about multiplying by 10 is that it just moves the decimal over. 
And so when we do that work, we end up with oh, 15. 15 and 9 do add to make 24, so it checks out. So we know we've done the problem right. So B is 4. Next problem is a word problem. Kind of difficult. It's got three unknowns. It talks about Jose ran twice as many kilometers as Karen. So we don't know how many kilometers Jose ran, so let's call Jose distance he ran J. And let's write an equation to match this. Jose ran twice as many kilometers as Karen. So let's say that Jose's amount of running, his number of kilometers, is two times Karen's amount. So there's an equation. It's got two unknowns, so we're trying to solve eventually for Karen's distance. Let's continue reading on, though. It says adding 8 to the number of kilometers Jose ran. So let's do that. Let's add 8. So new equation here. 8 plus Jose's number of kilometers divided by 4. So we're taking this expression here, and we're going to divide it by 4. This gives the number of kilometers Maria ran. Okay, so it equals Maria's. Well, it says that Maria ran 3 kilometers, so we know Maria equals 3. So what they want to know is how many kilometers did Karen run? Let's go ahead and substitute. Let's take this 3, put it in for that M right there. So now I've got this, J plus... 8 divided by 4 equals 3. And so if I was to divide each of these terms by 4, I'd have j over 4 plus 2. Now how do I get the 2? Well, I divided 4 by 8 equals 3. Now I've got a two-step equation, so we can solve that. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 2 from all sides. So now I've got this j over 4 equals 1. And so all I have to do from there is multiply by 4. And that will cancel out the 4s here, but i got to do the same thing on the other side. So J equals 4. So that's how many miles Jose ran, but they don't want to know that. They want to know Karen's distance she ran. Well, right here, J 4 is what Jose ran. So let's go ahead and put that 4 right back here. And that equals 2K. And so all we have to do is find out what Karen ran. Well, Karen ran half of Jose's amount. And so... Divide by 2, that gives us 2. So 2 kilometers is the distance that Karen ran. Those are typical types of problems you'll see on tonight's homework. Good luck.